What was ruined by rich people? There used to be a really nice big park in the center of the city where I live. Everyone would go there. It was a nice open space. Take your kids, take your dogs, enjoy the fresh air. Then some people from the rich part of town along the edges of the park decided they didn't like the noise coming from the park and pulled some things to buy it out and walled it off so you couldn't go to the park unless you lived in that specific neighborhood anymore. The worst part is a ton of money was spent when they first bought it building it up, adding fountains and children's play areas and redoing the flower beds, and then no money or attention was given to it again and the whole place fell into disrepair. So now, even if you live in the neighborhood, you can't go there because everything is falling apart and overgrown. So they took the really nice park from everyone else and then neglected it until it became a dump in the middle of the city. And it turns out the grass isn't always greener on the other side, especially when it's behind a rich person's wall. Story 2. Everyone keeps talking about the mountain towns, but I've been living here in Grand Junction my whole life. It used to be a cheap POS town to pass through. Then the Palisade turned into a wine town tourist trap. And the big name companies came and moved in and did all the small businesses and stores. Then they all just picked up and left empty buildings. Now the town is prices like a big city because it's Colorado. Yet it's a total POS town. Why does my apartment cost $1,500 a month? Why? It used to be $500. Literally getting prices out of Valleytown because it's colorful Colorado. Not to mention the fact that companies are building apartment complexes nonstop all over Colorado. Then price them at a stupid high rate and then leave them empty because the companies can afford to eat the cost of them being empty every month until a California kid moves in with his parents' money. Story 3. Disneyland, or Disney World if you're handicapped, used to be that if you were a wheelchair user but could transfer, Disney would let you and your party go in the exit and skip the line. It made it easier to load the person into the ride and it made the Disney experience a little better for people who are otherwise usually dealt with as an afterthought, if at all. Then rich people started to rent handicapped people so their precious, entitled crotch goblins wouldn't need to wait in line at Disney. When word got out, Disney had to change the policy so handicapped people would have to be split from their group while the group waited in line. Disney was one of the only places where handicapped people were not treated as an afterthought, but the elite ruined that. Yep, this has got to be the best, worst example of rich people ruining things and the happiest place of all places. Story 4 American freedom, financial justice, these people don't care about you or me. They may as well live on a different planet. They are so out of touch with the struggles of the common person. The U.S. politicians and Wall Street hedge fund investors are the people representing the American people and money. Most of their agendas are for their own financial and personal gain. The 2008 financial crisis is a great example of how little they care about us. Now we're entering another financial crisis even worse than 2008, and they are downplaying how bad it will be. The White House press secretary recently told the public that we are looking into it a little too much, that the current inflation, import-export rates, and interest percentage hikes are not as bad as they seem. People who don't make more than $250,000 are the ones feeling the pressure. These rich people aren't cutting losses like we have to. They have never had to stand in line at a food pantry. They have never had their electricity turned off. They never had to go into the routine of starving themselves just enough to ration their food proportions for the week. These people spend $100,000 on a wedding dress, $40,000 on funeral flowers, $9 million every other year to move trees around their yard. These people eat like kings. Meanwhile, the classes under them are sold into the idea to fill up on food that is harming us. These politicians keep us distracted talking about useless things. The U.S. has a mental illness issue. The main cause? We're being suppressed. Life is getting extremely hard to get through these days. Financial pressure, social pressure. We are taught that going into debt is always the answer. Our healthcare system is a joke. Health insurance is a joke. Getting a higher education, you go into thousands of dollars of debt just to only find a job that pays you $15 an hour. These days, it costs you an arm and a leg to buy a house. Both spouses are now required to work a full-time job just to make ends meet. You have to send your children into daycare that costs the same as a whole month's worth of rent just so you can keep your job. Most people would like to see their families, and with all of this financial pressure and the daily duties of being a mom and a dad, there is no time to go visit your cousins or sisters or mom for that matter. They don't want to answer the questions that affect most of us Americans. The rich keep us working class, poverty people under their heel, just enough so that they have someone to work for them and cater to their every need. The only way to solve this is for the general American people to band together and fight the system, work together, support small businesses, Lift each other up, buy locally grown food and products, 
Be careful who you vote for, and when you vote, hold those politicians accountable for what they promised. Be careful in what you invest your money into. Be careful on which news media outlet you listen to. We simply cannot live in a world where it is Democrats versus Republicans all the time. We need to work together as a people and stop fighting about the small stuff. We all have common ground, common needs, things that anger us. We need to care about one another and we're all human. It doesn't matter where you came from, what you look like, and we're all in this together anyway. We all just need to wake up. This, so true. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, not enough people care to do anything about it or they just don't know how. Story 5. The value of the dollar. Corporations work on the basis of making as much money as possible for stockholders. So if they can get you to pay $4 for a loaf of bread that costs them less than a dollar for ingredients, company time expended, packaging, machine wear and tear as a result of that loaf being made, a minuscule share of insurance costs and delivery costs per loaf, and still charge more than four times those costs per loaf, they will do it within a blink of an eye and without any consideration for their customers' bottom line and their share in increasing the cost of living. What should they charge? About 15 to 25% beyond all expenses, and those expenses should be minimized while providing as much the same quality of product as possible. And most companies before the 1980s basically did this, and both consumers would be proud to buy their bread, and the stockholders would be proud to own that company's stocks because of the companies not only making a great product but refusing to pilfer the pockets of consumers. Story 6. It's not the rich, it's the unaccountable rich that are the problem. Wealth is power and unchecked power corrupts, assuming those who seek it aren't corrupt already. Unaccountable wealth is unaccountable power. If the rich are not ruled, they will rule us by buying our governments out from above us. They already have. The unaccountable rich have ruined the world, but we have let them. We let them ruin it by buying their products, believing their lies, sharing those lies, and saying, we can't do anything about it. Stop believing that and stop saying it. The last time the poor ate the rich, it worked, although I don't recommend bringing it back. It's odd to me how the world is suddenly becoming so hostile toward the unaccountable rich. Musk's Twitter dumpster fire, Trump's sudden legal vulnerabilities, all the negative focus on the WEF and BlackRock. They've been diverting our attention to disinformation, postmodern, and racial conflicts, but we may be getting ready for the great class war. The unaccountable rich versus the world. Story 7. Farming used to be a poor man's job, but it is now absurdly expensive to conduct. Every piece of farming equipment is sold by an oligopoly that charges extortionate prices to the farmers, and Congress has intentionally stifled competition among these companies because of their intense lobbying power. The only people that can successfully make it as farmers are those with substantial wealth or farmers signing lopsided contracts with big agro companies. As a result, farmers must engage in unsustainable farming practices that damage the environment and waste tremendous amounts of water to maximize their yield and recoup their losses. The sad thing is, sustainable farming is achievable and we could easily feed the entire world with sustainable farming. But agro companies need their money. Story 8. Camping. I don't know how it is in the US, but in Europe, it's getting out of hand. I was born in 1991 and much of my childhood was spent in summer camps in Slovenia or Croatia. Back then, camps were for poor people in hotels and apartments, a flat you can rent for a week, were seen as an upscale version of summer vacation. You paid little and you got little in old school camps. There were no lots, there was just a shower and a sink. Electricity was not always an option, so you usually went to a reception to charge your phone or did it in the toilets while tidying up. Rarely did camps have more than two to three stars because nobody was prepared to pay any extra and still sleep outside. Then came the new millennium and suddenly these rich folks wanted to feel a connection with nature. So they stopped booking hotels and started going to camps. But they're prepared to pay extra so all camps suddenly became five four-star camps with organized lots, water, and electricity on every lot, 24-7 cleaning service for the toilets, and of course, the prices went up. Now, camping is often more expensive than staying at a hotel. I really hate rich people for this. Story 9 my hometown, it was a beautiful fishing village on the Gulf of Mexico. Then Austin became the hot place for rich people to live and they wanted weekend vacation homes in my hometown. That would not have been so bad, but with them came major retail chains and malls. Soon, land was being destroyed for parking lots and most of the natural features that made the area so beautiful were bulldozed to make way for asphalt. I inherited some land there and I'm seriously grateful considering turning it into a conservation cemetery in order to protect it after I am gone. 
If you aren't familiar with the concept, a conservation cemetery has no headstones or markers of any kind. Family members just get a set of GPS coordinates. However, since the land is now a cemetery, it can never be developed. The whole goal is to protect the land. This land has been in my family for over 170 years, and it is one of the few sizable pieces left. I have no heirs, so I thought this could be a gift to the community. Many conservation cemeteries double as parks. My other big beef with rich people is that I live with chronic pain from an accident in my 20s. It is often debilitating. There are medications that help me live a normal life. However, thanks to the greed of the Sackler family, the DEA has put down all medicines. As a result, millions of people with legitimate, well-documented chronic pain have to suffer in order to protect the misusers created by the Sacklers. Doctors have become too scared to prescribe anything because the DEA is all over them. Recently, a friend of mine had a mastectomy and she was told to just take some Advil or Tylenol for her post-op pain. And if you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button for more videos like this. Story 10. People confuse high prices caused by demand, supply, imbalances, and blaming it on rich people. Things you used to like or used to be cheap are more expensive because it either got more popular or it got scarcer. Lobsters are not expensive because rich people eat them. They are expensive because there are fewer lobsters in the ocean but more people who want to eat lobsters. Thailand is more expensive because fewer Thais live in poverty and Thai labor is more expensive. Also, all the poor Americans here are still ridiculously rich by global standards. A lot of things are more expensive now because poverty in the developing world is decreasing and they are competing via demand to have the same standard of living that poor Americans had 50 years ago. Story 11. I mean, what haven't they ruined? Affordable foods, quinoa, skirt flank steak, lobster, lamb, sushi, oxtail, oysters, brisket, salmon, etc. All of these were once affordable foods that weren't considered fancy. Interesting housing options like lofts or reclaimed industrial spaces. These were options that were super affordable if you had a little bit of know-how and a will to do some work. Before elevators, the poorest people lived in lofts and artists frequently lived in reclaimed industrial spaces. Obviously now, those options are only for the rich. Fashion stuff, various fashion brands like Levi's, eyewear brands like Ray-Ban. All of these were affordable until either monopolies like Luxottica took over or denim went from affordable working men's clothes to fashion statements. Story 12. This question is depressing. The answer is almost everything. They are opposed to the working class making a living wage and dedicated to making what we can afford less affordable. North America was built on servitude and the rich are eager to return to those conditions as close as possible, as soon as possible. Why do you think socialism is demonized in the States? Ownership by the people as opposed by the few? They claim that will make people lazy and their laziness will affect you. Meanwhile, Musk has made, not earned, but made, over $5,000 for every hour he has been alive. You can't tell me he does $5,000 work of labor every hour and that his wealth accumulation hasn't affected you negatively. He fights and lobbies against workers' rights as much as any rich wannabe overlord. We need to relearn how to make, fix, and grow our own stuff and learn self-reliance. I'm no off-grid, fist-shaking hermit. I'm just learning myself and I buy all the same stupid stuff that you do. Because the rich only exist on or complete reliance on the products and institutions they've created. We're not going to starve them anytime soon, but if you buy a $100 thing and learning to tighten a bolt means you don't have to give them $100 to buy a new thing a year later, why wouldn't you learn to tighten a bolt? Story 13. I got three things in mind. First, Rolex. All right, bear with me. A Rolex Oyster Perpetual is their most basic model. Retails for like $6,000. I realize that's a lot of money for a watch. However, it is an achievable amount for most Americans who save up for it. When the model was redesigned, it came in some fun colors like turquoise. These were immediately unobtainable and retail for $16,000 pre-owned. Most Rolex models are retailing for more than double the already high MSRP on secondary markets. You literally can make double your money by simply purchasing one. You just have to find one. Dealers are forbidden to sell over MSRP, Submariners, GMTs, etc. While Rolex has never been cheap, they have become stupidly overpriced, both due to price increases and secondary market demand. Second is golf. If you go to Scotland, their terrain and grass is nothing like what you find on TV in America. Rich people have set up this golfing model across the world that is bad for the environment and makes the game unnecessarily easier. Half the fun should be the chance your ball lands on a scraggly piece of grass and you have to skill shot your way out of it. Have you ever seen an all-green 18-hole golf course in Arizona when it's 120 degrees Fahrenheit outside? It's unnatural and unnecessary. 
Third, towns and communities. Housing is now only built in tightly packed developments with no amenities to make developers as much money in as small of a space as possible. You can't live on one street and walk to the store on the next. There's nothing to do. There are no new communities, just deserts covered in houses. What if you want to do something? Get in the car and drive 20 to 30 minimum on underdeveloped roads to the actual town that's far too small for the amount of people they've packed around it. There's no parking. Lines are out the doors. People are desperate for literally anything to do, but all we do is build more houses. There are other things about rich people that they've ruined, but that's my biggest gripe. Story 14. Logan Paul, he ruined Pokemon. At my local Walmart, they had to move all of the cards behind the register with the cigarettes because grown men were fighting over them and making a mess. This was never a problem until that schmuck came around and started posting about it. Now scalpers are more prominent. During Halloween, there were limited edition Halloween Pokemon cards to be given out to trick-or-treaters that you could buy. All of them were gone and were being sold online for way, way more. He made it hard for people that genuinely care about the game to buy anything because stuff is always sold out. I already hated him for that thing he pulled in the forest in Japan. This made it even worse. Story 15. Politics. They put massive funding into candidates over 50,000 miles from their own homes so that they can implement their own political views, completely disregarding what the people of that community need or want. We really need to bring back some budgeting rules to politics to keep these races about the people that these guys are supposed to represent. And if you have an idea of who I'm referring to specifically, then just know I have nothing but respect for your views. It's just guys like that who really ruin things for the rest of us. Anyway, no more rich creeps and megacorps trying to buy political offices. Story 16. I don't think it's all rich people, to be honest. It's humanity as a whole. We no longer have to worry about basic needs and survival, so we min-max every aspect of our lives. You see it with kids' sports, for example. They aren't out there just playing for fun. They're the next Messi, Harper, etc., and they are super special, blah, blah, blah. People don't own a second home to just have. It has to be an Airbnb profit-making machine. I started a hobby and my wife was like, how can you make money doing it? Man, I just enjoy doing it and I do not care about making money or anything. Story 17. Hawaii. Prices are ridiculous for housing. My wife's family will be selling the home that has been in their family for three generations and was built by my wife's great-grandparents. No one can afford to buy the others out when her grandparents pass away. Part of my wife's family have already left Oahu and are more going to be coming this way in the next 10 years. We talked about moving there and making it work, but the quality of life we could afford would be destroyed by the high housing costs. On top of that, the high prices have driven more people to homelessness and crime. Story 18. America's police spending. I used to think very highly of the USA, but in recent decades, eh, not so much. My biggest concern is police mistreatment. In saying this, as a foreigner, I have noticed that my country's own police force are quoting American police spending to the government and demanding for weapons and other military gear. And at the same time, police mistreatment is also on the rise. The problem is that I live in a country where crimes are low and weapons are totally banned. The police here have very low probability of encountering criminals, and yet they want all these cool gears which will at some point reach an officer that is trigger-happy. Story 19. Better question would be, what hasn't been ruined by rich people? Anything that starts to get attention and popularity, especially among the rich, is pretty much rapidly ruined. Just look at cities. When it gets too crowded and suffocating, the wealthier people move further out, usually to new little suburbs or small towns, but then realize they want the city back. So they push to bring things in, more shopping, more entertainment, more, more, more. Then they're right back to overcrowded awfulness they left before and the process starts all over again, ruining small town life and the people who can't get away from what they leave in their wake. Story 20. Old video games. I got into the hobby like 20 years ago and back then you bought old stuff because it was cheap. I played NES in the 2000s because we didn't have a lot of money growing up. Now you basically need to be a doctor to afford most of the things I was buying as a teenager. I remember spending $30 on a copy of Pokemon Stadium and thinking I was an idiot for doing so. If you can spend $2,000 on a rare Saturn game that will eventually one day have disc rot, you need to really think about how much money you have. You should probably match that amount with a donation to a charity or something. Well, if any of these stories got to you, here's more. YouTube thinks you're going to love this. I'll catch you in that video and thanks for hanging with me on this one.